G'day, this is Charlie. And today I'm going to show you about Cloudberry Explorer for Amazon S3. Now I've started using Amazon for storing a lot of my audio and video files. Uh, because it's optimized to deliver content much more quickly to my site vi my site visitors. I'll stop stuttering now. Uh, and it's relatively inexpensive and I also think it's quite easy to use once you know how you're doing it. Uh, the one thing that I did find with Amazon S3 when I started using it was getting my content up there was a bit of an issue. Now there's a couple of ways to do it and one of them is using a Firefox plugin but not everyone uses Firefox and sometimes it's a bit, um, oh, I'm going to say cumbersome, not overly cumbersome but a little bit cumbersome to use. And I found uh, Cloudberry the other week and thought wow this is pretty cool. So what, what I'm going to do is show you where to find Cloudberry. You can get a free download of it to use. Uh, you can also buy a pro version if you want, but you don't need to to do the basic stuff that we're going to do today. Um, I won't go through how to install it because it installs just like a normal Windows program. But then I'll go through how we can set it up to access your own Amazon AWS account uh, and how we transfer files with it. So the first thing we're going to do is head to um, my Windows, my, my Firefox uh, window and you'll see that I'm at cloudberrylab.com and this is where uh, you get your download from. Now uh, to get your download, uh, once you get to cloudberrylab.com uh, locate in the products window the Amazon Cloudberry Explorer freeware for Amazon S3. You'll notice also that you've got Google Storage and Azure Blog. I haven't looked at these two yet. The Google Storage kind of in, in, intrigues me, but that's the topic of another um, subject. Click on the For Amazon S3 link and you'll see that you get the standard download window that comes up. Uh, now we've just got to locate it. You see here on the right hand side you have a download button. Uh, it's got the green arrow pointing down in the word download. Just click on download and uh, you'll download the, the, the installer software to your computer. Once you've got it on your computer uh, double click and off you go. Yeah, you can install it. Okay so once you've got it installed and running uh, you'll see that it pops up and you'll get something that looks a little bit like this. Now I've been using it so what you get as a start screen might be a little bit different to what you're seeing here uh, but I'll go through how you can add in your Amazon account uh, and then how you use it. Uh, what we're going to do to start with though is we're actually going to head across here to the Amazon services. So this is aws.amazon.com uh, aws.amazon.com for Amazon Web Services uh, and this is where you get access to uh, the storage capabilities of Amazon, the storage and content delivery capabilities that Amazon have put together. Uh, if you haven't already signed up for an account uh, you click on the create an AWS account uh, on the right hand side at the top and create your account or you, of course you can click on the sign up now button here on the right hand side. Uh, I'm going to assume that you've been through that process and that you have your AWS account. Once you have your AWS account return to the aws.amazon.com screen and click on the sign in to your AWS management console. Click on that and it will bring up a login screen. Now once you've got the login screen uh, up all you need to do is enter the email address and password that you registered with. Now I run RoboForm to uh, save all my passwords so I'm just going to drop down my RoboForm link list, select my login and click fill and submit and you'll see that it automatically logs me into AWS. Once you're logged in you're going to get uh, your bucket view. Uh, now you do need to have uh, access to each of these capabilities or the capabilities that you're using. Today we're just using the Amazon S3 capability so uh, if you've just set up your site 
uh, when you get to uh, this window it will say you need a valid subscription go through the process to subscribe to Amazon S3 uh, it will ask you to enter your part your credit card details etc uh, just so they know how to how to charge you when when you uh, use the services and then you'll be returned to this screen now we don't need this screen straight away what we need to do is get the information that is required so that we can set up uh, our Cloudberry Explorer now to do that we need to go to our account link and once you're on the account link uh, you'll see on the right left hand side we have security credentials is one of the options click on security credentials now we're going to come back to this screen I'm just going to leave it here for the moment we're going to go and actually start to set up um, the Cloudberry now you'll notice that I'm working between the two screens and the, between the two applications that's just because I find it easier to do it this way you may find it easier to do it in a slightly different manner but I'm going to work, walk you through my process so the next thing we do is we head back to Cloudberry and under Cloudberry uh, you may have a tab here that says new tab uh, but the way we're going to do this is up here under file we're going to go to Amazon S3 accounts and click on that now you'll see I already have an account created that's okay we're going to ignore that we're going to click on the new account button which you should have in your system as well so click on the new account and click add now the display name um, I'm going to put ask Charlie Latham so this is my Amazon S3 account now you'll see here that it's asking for an access and a secret key now we need to get these from that security window so we're going to hit back to Firefox and we're going to, going to scroll down the screen to where it says access credentials now on your screen I'm going to have these blocked out and the reason I'm going to have these blocked out is these is this is how you access your um, security account your, your account using these services so you've got to do you do have to treat this information as private information uh, so it's important that you do keep it secret to, um, from people now you'll notice that you have um, you, you know, you'll notice that I've probably well maybe you can't see it because I've got it blocked out but I've got two security keys enabled um, where you you will only have one if you've just set your account up I use two for various reasons uh, I'm going to use the one at the bottom because that's the one I use for my web services stuff uh, and you'll notice that you've got four columns the date it was created the access key ID the secret access key and the status whether it's active or inactive so the first thing you want to do is copy your access key ID now I simply do that by um, highlighting it on the screen by holding down my left mouse button and dragging my cursor across it uh, and then uh, right click and choose copy now that will put that into my clipboard for my computer then I'm going to go back to Cloudberry and under access key I'm going to paste it in then I'm going to click in the, the secret key button I'm going to go back to Firefox and under secret access key I'm going to click on show and again you'll notice that I've got this all blocked out I'm sorry guys but I'm not going to let you see this uh, but I'm going to highlight the secret access key that appears in the pop-out box I'm going to copy it and uh, back in Cloudberry I'm going to paste it into the secret key box then I'm going to say test connection and you'll see that it comes up and it says that it's trying to attempt connection and I know now that I have a successful connection with my my computer I'm going to say OK and you'll notice now that my Ask Charlie Latham account has been added to uh, the registered S3 accounts on my computer easy I'm going to close that down uh, now we're on the we're on the uh, welcome page of Cloudberry so we're, we're basically finished in uh, Amazon S3 so like all good people what we're going to do is we're going to go up because we're finished uh, we're going to go back to our management console and we 
going to actually sign out of our management console so that we don't leave an open session for someone else to, to grab hold of and use. And to sign out, we just click on the sign out button on the top right hand corner. And that will log us out of the web interface for our S3 console. Um, okay.